back again. Here's our here's our class for this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, Lily and I will be co-teaching. Uh, I'm Mahuan Aruan. Uh, I'm the East Kingdom Elmet Herald uh, and handle heraldic education. Uh, we'll uh, we'll put the slide up again at the end so you can capture our email addresses. Uh, mm -hmm. And Lily, I'm sorry I interrupted you as you were introducing yourself. Well, that's that's okay. Um, like I said, I am Lily Duv in Yenoimur. I am the East Kingdom Pantheon Herald in the submissions office of Blue Tiger. Uh, mostly I deal with names, but I have been learning blazons and emblazons. And this class hopefully will help get uh, some of you in, into and in, interested in the art of blazonry. So, uh, uh, Yep. So we're we're um, focusing on kind of this range that seems like the reflects the folks who have shown up from mm -hmm. beginner to intermediate heralds. If you're um, a real newcomer, this next hour might be uh, challenging, but ask lots of questions. Uh, ask uh, questions, take notes. Yeah, let us know when we've we've uh, skipped over something that that is unfamiliar to you and uh, it'll remind us that we need to, uh, to go back and cover it. Uh, and for those of you who are experts, uh, when we get to the sample problems, let the, let the newcomers uh, uh, dive in first and if we get things wrong, feel free to feel free to speak up and and let us know if we uh, if we make a mistake or leave out something important. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go through a hopefully relatively quick presentation on the basics of Blazin. Uh, we have some links to useful sources. Uh, then we're going to work through examples, and I hope that will be more than half of the time and hopefully a useful hands-on experiment. Uh, we'll do a question and answer session at the end, but if you run into questions along the way, don't feel like you have to wait. Could you just go ahead and, and ask us about words you don't recognize or things that, that are, don't seem obvious and we'll, uh, we'll work through them. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, Mathwin, can you put up the uh, links page? Uh, right now, right now, I don't see it. Yeah, so let me. Uh, the, to to our sample problems. No, not the sample problems. The um, the the links for blazonry help that we had. Uh, you mentioned that. Yes, I will. I will. I've got links in in the presentation as we that we'll get to in a minute. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try and zoom through this. Uh, speak up if uh, any of this seems confusing, but it sounds like hopefully a bunch of this will not be uh, not be brand new to you. Blazonry is the term we use to describe. Uh, the process of converting a armorial design into a written description. The written description is the blazon. The picture uh, of the armory is a, an emblazon. Uh, that the fact that those two words sound almost identical is a source of uh, endless confusion for uh, first timers. Uh, uh, I, I have no idea why. Uh, people in the medieval period thought it was helpful to use nearly identical words for those things. Um, so why do we use blazon at all? Uh, it is faster to write than to draw. Uh, it is more compact. Uh, uh, words are useful things. They, by reducing a armorial design to a written description, it lets us focus on the, the key elements of the design uh, and kind of separates us from, oh, that's a really lovely picture or that lion looks goofy. 
uh, it, it lets us focus on the sort of the timeless uh, essential part of the the design. And uh, crucially, blazons uh, allow uh, design armorial designs to be written down and transmitted to someone else who can then reconstruct them back into a picture or into a description. So you can mail someone in on the other side of the kingdom and say, my Lord is coming to visit your city. You'll recognize them by their banner, which has, you know, ghouls, a lion or and a whatever, whatever. And the herald on the other side can get that letter and send someone down to the gate to meet your guy and they'll be able to pick them out of the crowd. Um, so that that need to be able to take a design and turn it into a blazon and then turn the blazon back into uh, a picture uh, imposes some constraints on what we can design in armory. Uh, you can only use elements, colors, charges, lines that we have uh, vocabulary for in, in are able to blazon. So you can't just draw your creature, you know, doing some funny pose that even if it's a thing that that creature really naturally does sit that way, uh, if we don't have a way to blazon it, you can't write it down. The person on the other end can't turn that set of words into a picture. You can't use it in armory. Uh, and the language of blazon uh, has developed into a very sort of formalized, structured system. Uh, like a natural language, we can describe it as having a grammar and a vocabulary, the grammar being a description of the rules and the sort of structure, and the vocabulary being the individual terms for tinctures and charges and postures and a zillion other things that we slot into the structure of that grammar. Uh, a lot of that um, is formalized to the point where two different heralds looking at the same picture would generate the same blazon, but there's room for kind of artistic variation and people might come up with a couple different blazons that reduce down to the same picture. Uh, and the, those are considered to be uh, functionally equivalent. The official blazon, though, is the one that the kingdom's uh, sovereign of arms, usually the wreath herald, sets at the time that your uh, blazon is registered. So you fill in a blazon when you send in your submissions paperwork, uh, and during commentary, other heralds will say, oh, I, you know, I wonder if you know, could we leave that word out? Is there a better way to phrase that that'll that'll make it more obvious what's going on in this picture? Uh, and then at the end of the commentary process, uh, during the decision meetings and and writing the letter of acceptance and returns, the senior most heralds come up with your official blazon. Uh, and that is then the more or less permanent, except that we may go back years later and say, oh, in hindsight, that phrase was confusing, or we took another look at the picture and we realized we left out an important detail. Uh, so there's, anyone can look at a piece of armory and blazon it, but for officially registered armory, there's an official blazon uh, in the letter of, of acceptance and returns and stored in the society's uh, ordinary and armorial. Uh, and to some extent that reflects the taste and whims and preferences of the, the sovereign of arms at the time that it was registered. Some things that are in your picture may get left out. Um, little details that maybe you thought were cute or the, you know just something about the way you drew it uh, are, can be considered artistic variation they can get left out of the blazon. We don't, we're not gonna blazon that it's a light blue. We're not gonna blazon that, uh, you know, your, your lion looks grumpy. Uh, and similarly, when people are drawing your armory based on the blazon, uh, 
we allow them to draw a happy lion instead or to make the blue a slightly different shade of blue. Those things are all considered artistic details. And um, in, to a certain extent, the, the structure of the blazon uh, can be considered to have the, the true meaning or the, the true identity of that piece of, of armory. Um, so the vocabulary of blazonry is uh, uh, an enormous uh, challenge to, uh, to learn to, for newcomer heralds. Part of the challenge is that the terms are uh, not everyday English. They're a weird amalgam of Norman French and Middle English and uh, old fashioned spelling and things that, terms that developed along the way and got frozen in time. This is the way things were written down in the 1500s or, or at some moment in history, we decided that was the official spelling of that term and we've locked it in even though modern English spelling has, has developed further. So, you know, why uh, is the stripe around the edge of the field called a border rather than a border? That's how it was spelled 500 years ago and it stuck. Um, there is unfortunately no uh, hi, Lily. Yeah, um, nobody is seeing the presentation part of it. Can you can you check? Yep, it tells me I'm presenting. I will. Uh... What we're seeing is. Um, uh... A bit of a, a split uh, in the presentation. On the top is what looks like a, a the bottom half of a trebuchet, and on the bottom part of the screen, it's mostly the badge of the college. Yeah, uh, I don't know if we're supposed to see or not, but that's that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let me uh, let me try that again. Okay. Any better? Vocabulary? No, it's useful vocabulary references. Is that yeah, what we're supposed yeah, to be seeing? Yeah. So sorry about that. Uh, so, okay. Um, okay, uh, there we go. Yay. <laughs> uh, there, there's not a lot of uh, additional information on the screen that, that you've missed. I, this is just sort of my, my notes for uh, this, this spiel. Um, so, uh, some of you may be natural um, uh, language learners. Learning new languages for me has been incredibly uh, difficult, uh, as my high school Spanish teachers would tell you. Um, the, the only way I know to uh, absorb all of this vocabulary is just to look it up over and over again, keep exposing yourself to it and hope that it sinks in over time. Um, other people may have some tricks for, um, for learning this vocabulary, uh, uh, but I, I, I think a certain amount of it just comes through repeated exposure. Uh, and um, so there are uh, a zillion useful uh, references online the language we use in society blazonry is v extremely close with, with only a few um, kind of minor changes in dialect, uh, extremely close to uh, English heraldry standard practice. So if you find a uh, source of uh, uh, heraldic vocabulary uh, from uh, modern, uh, non-society heraldry, it will uh, almost certainly be pointing you in the right direction. Um, Parker's Glossary is a great uh, source. Uh, Torque's Glossary is a society source that I find quite useful. Um, we'll include these links uh, in the 
uh, in the chat and um, post them uh, mm -hmm. with this with this video afterwards. Uh, these are the two that I find most useful, but you can, for, for this kind of vocabulary, you can use almost any source and it will be pointing you in the right direction. I will say that Torix Glossary um, has some updated spellings in it and I find it easier to deal with than the Parker one, but it's gonna be up to you. Yeah. Um, so the other, the kind of the biggest, um, range of terms is the, the terms to describe all of the different types of charges, uh, that can appear in Armory. And there's literally thousands of these, uh, and there's, there's no way we're going to go through them all in any number of classes. Uh, there are two kind of standard sources for society heraldry uh, mm -hmm. that uh, that you can use. Uh, Mistholm or the Pictic uh, is more authoritative uh, and has a lot of information about charges when they emerged, uh, how common they are, special rules around them. Uh, my site of traceable heraldic art has uh, more images, but is uh, not as authoritative. So take it with a grain of salt, uh, but thousands of pictures that you can flip through and see what, mm -hmm. you know, it, what is the word that, that goes with this picture? What is the picture that goes with this word? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, like uh, with the other vocabulary, we're very close to non-society armory. So. References like Fox Davies that are uh, from 100 years ago, great sources, also a zillion pictures and uh, a good way to switch back and forth from, from pictures of charges to, uh, to the blazon terms that go with them and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so the grammar of blazonry uh, uh, is the, the way I think of the, um, how we put that vocabulary together into a, into a sentence. Uh, yeah, this so, is, this is the constructing. Yep. Um, so in terms of the general sequence, uh, for blazon, we go from the field to the charges and then to the charges that are layered on top of those charges. We go from the largest charges, the primary charges down to the smallest ones. We go from the center of the field out to the edges, from the from the top to the bottom, chief to base, and from the viewers left to right, the the dexter to the sinister. Um, mm -hmm. When we're um, figuring out how to um, work through those charges, we uh, we do that by talking about them as charge groups. And this is a slightly peculiar case where the, the way um, the society analyzes heraldry uh, differs or goes beyond what's used in, uh, in non-society mundane heraldry. This concept of char charge groups is something that the folks in the SCA uh, came up with, but it um, reflects the what's actually going on in a uh, non-society armory. It's, these are just terms that uh, don't, that, that we've made up to describe things that are in common practice. So when we look at armory, we um, find the largest and most central items. We say those are the primary charges, things that are arranged around them, uh, are the secondary charges or the smaller or around the edges of the field. Um, charges that are uh, placed on top of one of the primary or secondary charges are referred to as tertiary. Uh, in um, Like say you have a lion and on its shoulder is a sword, that's a tertiary charge. Yep. And uh, 
late in our uh, period of, of study in the in the 1500s, uh, you start seeing uh, a charge with another charge on it, and then another charge on top of that. Uh, and the they got a little crazy later on. <laughs> yep. The and the College of Arms uh, views that as uh, uh, Tudor degeneracy. Uh, and um, uh, while we will allow you to register uh, those things, we the, the Basil says Tudor messes, and yes, they yeah, were Tudor the, messes. <laughs> the the senior heralds will turn their nose up at at that and make you jump through additional hoops to prove that it's uh, legitimate uh, practice, um, and. Uh, uh, so we don't have good terms to, we, we don't frequently use the, the terms quaternary ch charge to talk about a, something that's on top of a tertiary charge. Uh, there's a, a relatively rare case of overall charges, which are overlap both the primary charge and the field. You, you'll see those occasionally, but they're, they're not a particularly common case. Yeah, Brian, uh, Brian just said ab about um, specialized registrations. He's in on tier and our current Laurel Sovereign of Arms, Juliana de Luna, is also out there. So I'm sure he knows her. She has a badge that is one of those Tudor messes. So if you ever want to look up a real it's long it's, blazon. That's, it's lovely, but it, that's it, a great. That's a great uh, one to look it up. Is, it is ornate, and it is. Uh, it, it it it's a sign of that transition to modernity and away from the um, the yes. relatively <laughs> uh, more elegant uh, in in the eyes of the the heralds, at least uh, uh, yeah. armorial design of the. Uh, 1200s through 1400s. Yeah. The, um, so uh, the, best, and, the best blazons are short and simple. So and, and if your if your armory requires a paragraph to describe it, uh, uh, the senior heralds will will look askance. Um, look askance, roll their eyes, and go, oh. <laughs> so to to go back to this um, question of. The, the sequence of of uh, items in a blazon with the with those concepts of charge groups um, we we talk about the the sequencing starting with the field or in the case of armory that doesn't have a field we write field list in in a real world blazon you would typically not include the word field list uh, but it's something we do consistently when writing out blazons so that uh, there's no ambiguity about, did we just lose that information? No, we, we really mean that this is a fieldless badge, but in, in outside of the context of the society, you know, written uh, without the word fieldless in front of them. Then we go through the primary charges and the secondary charges around them. Then the tertiary charges that are on those primary and secondaries. If there's overall charges, they appear at this point in the blazon. Then we talk about the peripheral secondary charges, things that are right around the edge of the field. Then tertiary charges on those. Here we're off into uh, things that you will not see often, that there are cadency marks, which are uh, a way that uh, a uh, a father who, with a coat of arms, uh, his children might um, use his coat of arms with a little mark on it that indicates I'm the the first son or the second son mm -hmm. or the third son, uh, and so I'm going to use my dad's arms, but with an extra little mark to to show where I am in the family tree. Uh, yep. We we do allow things like that in the SCA. We do have now second and third generation Skadians uh, coming in and wanting to use their parents' arms in some way. Um, so you'll see. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so you'll see that we we make it easy enough to register 
distinct arms for children uh, and and kids these days. They want to make their own name. So, uh, so th th those are not super common. Uh, another kind of odd case that gets tacked on at the very end is uh, royalty can um, retroactively grant you an augmentation, say, oh, go back and find your original coat of arms and add something special to it to show that you're you're in our favor for having done something extraordinary. Uh, those are uh, relatively uncommon uh, uh, and when they show up, get tacked on at the very end of the blazon. Yeah. This is the, the last chunk of grammar and then we'll go work some examples. So when you're blazoning a single charge group, um, we're going to list the attributes of that charge group in a very consistent order. Um, the, the arrangement or location, is this charge all the way at the top or on the side? Or if there are three charges, are they in a row or in a vertical stripe or, or whatever? Um, sometimes those words actually get shifted later in, in this phrase, it's the one piece of this that moves around. Um, after the arrangement comes the number of charges, like we've got two lions or three mullets. Uh, then after the number is what is the, what is the type of charge uh, or subtype? Um, then the posture orientation, uh, uh, postures apply to uh, animals uh, and people, they're standing, they're walking, they're in whatever position. And orientation uh, is uh, describes a sort of rotation or, or direction of a charge. And finally, uh, we get modifications. Uh, if you have a uh, charge that has a bumpety line at the edge, or it's been you know, it's been cut off roughly. Those uh, those terms go at the very edge, at the very end of that description. Uh, and then the last term is the tinctures or treatments, uh, the the colors that the the charge applies in. Uh, I feel like this uh, there should be a mnemonic for the the order of these terms, and I've I've struggled to come up with one. Uh, it, it, you just have to kind of uh, internalize this. Look, look it up often enough. Eventually, it'll become second nature that the tincture always comes last, and the posture comes after the type of charge. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know a, a great way to to remember that other than repeated exposure. Um, and that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of attributes to describe each individual charge, but conveniently. Um, for a lot of things, there are defaults uh, that don't have to get mentioned uh, if they are in their standard, uh, if they have their standard value. So uh, some kinds of arrangements are are just the, the natural order of things. If there's one charge and it's in the middle of the field, you don't have to say that it's in the middle of the field. That's just where we would expect to find it if you didn't say anything about it. If there's two charges and the field is divided into two, we're gonna assume, unless you tell us otherwise, that one's on one side and one's on the other side. Three charges, it's normally two and one. You only have to describe the, the arrangement if it's something other than that. Postures, some animals have a, a posture that they're almost always seen in. Eagles almost always have their wings out to the sides. Lions are normally rampant. Uh, Swords normally have their point upwards. Arrows normally have their points downwards. Uh, if you're using your charges are in those postures or orientations, you don't have to tell us that. That's, that's what we're going to assume if you don't tell us otherwise. Uh, and similarly, if you have a ordinary or a line of division, you don't say that it's got a bumpety line. We're going to assume it's a plain line. So because those things are so common, uh, uh, the fact that you can leave them out of the, the blazons mean that blazons uh, end up not being 
uh, as long as, as they would be if you had to include them every single time. Yeah. Yes. Once you know what the, what the default of a charge is and you don't see anything else within the blazon, assume it's, a, assume it's the default. Yeah. Uh, and th those defaults are also a good um, guide to armorial design. Uh, if you want an eagle, uh, the fact that eagles in period are almost always displayed with their wings out to the side is, a, is also a hint that that's pr probably a good uh, orientation for your, a good posture for your eagle to be in. Unless you're trying to do something complicated, in period, people expect eagles to be in that posture. Uh, it's good period design to follow those defaults mm -hmm. uh, more often than not. Okay. Oh, the fun part. So uh, that was that was a lot of information. Um, hopefully, uh, uh, not too not too painful. Um, let's uh, let's work through some uh, examples. Um, uh, I have a uh, a set of um, examples of blazon, which I'm going to paste uh, into uh, the. Uh, there we go. It's in the chat. We can pull that up. Um, and uh, if you're in a an environment where it's easy to. Uh, to pull those up in a separate window, feel free to do that. Otherwise, you can uh, look at the screen as I uh, share it and, uh, and we'll work through them together. Uh, my apologies, I just saw in the chat messages here that Christine had a, had a question that I didn't catch the first time, which is about cadency marks. Um, uh, the um, the system of cadency of uh, sort of w what would you do by default to uh, differentiate a parent's coat of arms uh, for a child uh, was different in different um, parts of medieval Europe. Uh, so in Scotland, there's a uh, a system where you uh, put bordures on the parents' arms and um, kind of work through a series of changes about what color is the bordure, and then in a future generation, what line of, you know, plain line or bumpety line does it have? Um, in, uh, in English and Norman French armory, and I think think through through much of uh, much of France as well uh, there's a system uh, of very standard cadency marks that are pretty widespread uh, and the the standard symbol for a uh, a first the, the firstborn son who, who will inherit their parents arms uh, but their parents are still alive they, they haven't inherited them yet is what we call a label, uh, it, which is a uh, little kind of a uh, little strap across the top with little dangly edges, uh, uh, which looks like this, uh, a sort of a, a bar across the top of the shield, uh, sometimes reaching to the edge, sometimes uh, not all the way to the edge, with some number of little dangly straps hanging off of it. Um, so that that is the standard cadency mark for uh, for a first first child. Yep, and that's the one you see fairly often in the SCA. Um, it is fairly easy to add something like that to a child's. Um, a child's device. So um, if you see a parent coming in and say, I want to, you know, do a device for my child and that child is very young, you can suggest that we do a cadency 
Um, and the child can always change that later on if they decide to. Um, so let's work through some uh, examples. Um, uh, this, uh, I see a bunch of people have logged in here. Anyone who, who uh, isn't able to pull this up, um, uh, feel free to uh, just talk through things and we'll um, uh, we'll work through these examples, and then uh, as as we come up with bits of vocabulary that uh, that we need to to learn, we'll, we can uh, have some some reference cards that we can we can pull up that uh, okay. will help us pull these okay. pull these out. This is probably um, the the simplest blazon. Yes, um, it is a non XCA example. It is from Libya. This is the the official flag of Libya. Uh, they they went uh, for for restrained elegance. Um, anyone want to uh, hazard a guess? Do we know anyone? Do we do we know what that color is called? Recently learned this tincture. Anyone, Bueller? Is that Bert? Bert. Yep. Uh, nice and easy. Vert is green. Yes. It is, it is the French or, or part of the French word for green, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, so nice, uh, nice, simple case. Uh, so and here's another non SEA example. This is for France. How would we say that? Who else wants to hazard a guess? Would that be uh, Azure, three, Florida Lee, or? Sounds right to me. Uh, and uh, we, nice and simple. We don't have to blazon the arrangement because that's our default arrangement for for three charges. Is that two and one uh, mm -hmm. orientation? Nice, simple example. Yep. So if you see something that says Azure three fleur de lis or you know, uh oh, France. Yeah, this is that that uh, that pattern of uh, gold fleurs on a blue background shows up uh, on uh, lots of uh, there's a little accent mark on lots of other pieces of, of armory uh, to okay. show allegiance. Okay, so here's here's Spain. They'll get more challenging. It's okay to be wrong. Trust me. I have been wrong, wrong, and wrong. <laughs> Gules, a bar, or. Yeah. Gules, a bar, very good. Except um, when we have just one bar, uh, we use a slightly different um, term. Uh, so um, fess. for the, yeah, a fess. Uh, this yep. is true for uh, a lot of the, uh, the ordinaries. Uh, there's a, a, a term we use that when there's just one of them big and filling the center of the, the field. And once there are, um, multiple uh, of them, we um, we call them diminutives uh, and uh, use a, like a, a cutesy little name for them. Uh, yeah. The, the same thing also happens if they kind of get pushed to the edge of the field by something else being the big primary charge in the middle. Uh, uh, so instead of a bar or, we're going to call this a fess or. Yep. Um, and you'll notice uh, that um, or has this, is, is always written in uppercase. Uh, yeah. It's the only tincture that gets written in uppercase no matter where it occurs. Yeah, I think um, modern English heraldry may uh, capitalize all of the tinctures. Uh, 
And we do it just because if you saw ghouls, a fess, or you might think like a, a fess or what? Uh, and uh, yeah, we, 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 capital, we capitalize it to show that it's not the word this or that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, this here. is from the Dukes of Oldenburg. It's a, an actual simple German. Yep. Uh, anyone want to dive in? Nice, uh, very similar to our last design. The colors reversed. Uh, or two fast schools. Two uh, bars. Yep. But so this is the this is the flip side of that fest versus bars distinction. Uh, if there was just one of them, it's a fest. If there's two. They're bars. So we're going to say two bars. Yep. And, and here and here you have the background is is the golden or and the bars are ghouls in red. Uh, uh, Whereas we had the ghouls. Yeah. The other way around. For before. Uh, for um, most of the ordinaries the the relationship between the the singleton name and the diminutive name is uh is more obvious um but fess and bar is the kind of the odd one out uh mm -hmm. those two words don't seem to have any relationship to each other uh yeah. if we ever dis if we ever figure out time travel we're going to go back and strangle the person that came up with that okay all right. Okay. Next example, Here's, Indonesia. Okay, this is a fairly modern thing, but it's nice and simple as well. How would we do that? Okay, Perfect. Jonathan? Oh, sorry. Uh, nope. Who started? That was that Drasma? Yes, it was. Okay, so let's see, Drasma. What do you say? Perfect. Ghouls and Argent. Ghouls and Argent. Yep. yep. So you have to say a, the you have to say the uh, the division of the field first, rather than say one color over another, because this is an an equal um, an equal division. So we have to say yeah. the field is divided first. Mm -hmm. And there's no charges on this field. We we consider this a single, just a field uh, with with no charges that is divided. Yes, uh, Basil. Uh, so um, that's that's Indonesia. Um, okay. So let's okay, move on now to Shire or False Island. Okay, this is an SCA example. Uh, that's Perfess and Grailed. Argent and uh, Verit. Mm -hmm. And you can see that's a, not a regular line, that's called an engrailed line. Uh, and hold on, there we there go. Are there a zillion of these, there aren't a zillion, there's uh, 15 of these complex lines that uh, that we recognize in society armory um, uh, there you will occasionally see uh, divisions in modern armory that uh, we do not allow mm -hmm. kind of cool things from Canada with maple leaves or from uh, Scandinavia with fir trees uh, but these are the ones that actually show up prior to uh, prior to 1600, um, and uh, and they can all be really pretty. Yeah, uh, uh, some of them um, are are common, uh, embattled and indented, uh, and wavy show up a lot. Some of them are not at all common. The uh, rainy and these flory counterflory, uh, you know, show up in 
you know, less, much less than 1% of all uh, medieval armory. Uh, there's some um, kind of tricky uh, edge cases around uh, complex lines. Um, uh, for example, engrailed and invected are sort of mirror images of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can look uh, at them. Uh, I, I tend to think of it as uh, engrailed has little cups taken out of it, like the, the grail, whereas invected is being invaded. Uh, I'm sure there's some more proper way to, to think of the, the two. Um, uh, but it can be a, a little uh, a little tricky when uh, when those are used on an ordinary versus uh, used on a line of division, figuring out which which is the right way to to use them. Uh, there's also some special cases around uh, embattled. Uh, if you have a uh, an ordinary like a a fest that has a top and bottom edge embattling by default only shows up on the top and you have to use a special word like betrest to say that you want it embattled on both the top and the bottom of the ordinary there's a okay. lot of weird edge cases there that uh that i think uh you can only learn by by repeated exposure um okay so now we're so, going to get into a little more sca stuff so this is, is me this is this is my my arms here. Uh, anyone want to take a okay. charge of that? No, oh, well, Basil got it, but let's see if. Yep, yep. Shannon got it. Does anybody want to say it out? Drasma. It's or who else? Uh, it's, or Basil? It's under Brian. Or, oh, there uh, you go. Okay. Perfect Argent and Vert, a bear, passant ghouls. So a walking yep. bear. Yeah. Uh, and for, uh, for postures of, of uh, animals, there's another case where there's uh, a zillion uh, pieces of uh, a, Kind of customized uh, vocabulary, uh, uh, and even even with these uh, kind of limited cases, there's uh, there's sort of peculiar uh, boundary conditions where, for one particular kind of animal, we're going to use a different term. Uh, most of these terms, I believe, are from the Norman and from the French, yeah. um, and come to a come come to us down. Ultimately, if you go back far enough, they come from the Latin. Um. So but, uh, th th those those postures, uh, you'll see lots of kind of minor variations about exactly how vertical is the creature and how close are their paws together. Uh, but the, the mm -hmm. basic, uh, the basic categories uh, are mm -hmm. persistent over our, our entire period of, of study. Okay. So, and we have obviously the, um, the field division and you start with the top, you say the bottom, and then you have the the bear overall. Yep. Yep. And the bears are our primary charge. So let's let's skip ahead to the next example. Uh, this is a badge that I've also registered. Uh, very very similar, but uh, you'll notice it's not on a shield or on an anything. Uh, and what do we say when it's not on in anything? That it's fieldless. Yes. Yep. So we That's start right. with fieldless. And you'll notice we put that in brackets. And uh, you, there will be some cases in which 
people will um, will provide a blazon for this and not use the word fieldless in, in the front of it. We do that uh, consistently when we're we're blazoning things to to make sure it's obvious that we didn't leave it out by accident. Um, but uh, as long as there's no ambiguity, perfectly fine yep. to leave that out. Yep. Uh, and then, just, so this is the same charge that we had on our our previous uh, item. It's a bear tessent cools. There we go. All right. Uh, here's another non SCA example. Uh, the House of Gonzaga, which is, I believe, to, Italian. Want to take a stab at that? Bari or in Sable? I think he's got it. Yep. Uh, and you so can. And now you see that's another sort of diminutive. We have bars, and now we have Bari. Yeah, which means uh, it's a lot. So those those divisions. Um, Kind of mirror the names that we use for uh, ordinaries. So, in the same way that we have a a fess, and then we divide things per fess, we can have bars and divide things uh, into into bari. Um, uh, that um, that parallel between uh, ordinaries and divisions um, uh, is um, takes a, a little bit of uh, work to, to view the kind of that as a abstract structure but I, I've once once I realized how these terms were interrelated it it, uh, it made it a lot less confusing that the same uh, the same terms kept getting, Bandied around, uh, afes, perfes, infes, and festwise. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, how am I going to learn all of these, all of these different words? Uh, but then when I realized that it's sort of the same set of words being combined in uh, a structured set of ways, it sort of clicked for me that this is, uh, this is like a grammar that has mm -hmm. uh, pieces that can get slotted together in a, in a kind of a flexible and reusable way. Um, so you'll see uh, th these same terms show up uh, in kind of in these combinations where the um, peripheral ordinaries are also used to describe the locations of charges on the field that are in those on those sides or that are pointed towards those sides mm -hmm. and the central ordinaries uh, are used to describe field divisions that cross in the same direction or a group of charges that are laid out in the same uh, in the same orientation the same arrangement mm -hmm. or a single charge that is or a small number of charges that are pointed in that orientation um does that does that make sense that that kind of combination of terms for if, okay let's divisions, arrangements and orientations okay let's go back and say okay so you want something you want a divided field up and down so that's per pale if you're talking about a field and then you want two things up and down in the middle, that's impale. Okay? Yep. And if you've got a single long object that's stretched out from top to bottom, it's palewise. Uh, so um, that, that structure makes, makes sense. Does everybody sort sort of see what you've got? You've got basically one term being used in, in several different ways. 
it is going to take some time. That's all right. Perfectly, perfectly more, fine. Some more examples. Okay. All right. So we did Gonzaga. Okay. This is this is another uh, another SCA example. Kit de Woodford. And Basil has it. Yep. Anybody else want to try and uh, guess it? Anyone? So it's Bari Wavy, Argent and Purper. So um, the that's that wavy uh, line. It's again we're we're it's like the Bari uh, or Sable of Gonzaga. It's uh, just the line is wavy rather than straight. Yep. Um, and I don't know if I'd call that pure pure, but if that's what's registered as, so be it. It's it's purplish. Well, it might be. It might just be my screen right now then. I would have almost called that azure, but that's okay. It can be per pure. Um, okay, and here's another one. Okay, so. Gracia de Madrigal. Okay, this is we're getting a little bit more complex. Uh, someone want to take a stab at the field to start with? Uh, start sure. with the field. Field is Pali, um, Pali Azure and Argent. Okay. Pali being the 90 degrees opposite of Bari. Yep. Going with the... We, the went, we went from, the from stripes up at stripes like this to stripes like this uh and we start with azure because it's the the one that appears on the the left or equal, the left equal, most viewers seb left says left. seb says equal color and metal yes we do that now how would you describe the green thing a fess invected vert is it invected uh so we're we're close um invected uh is a, is a kind of a curvy line oh, indented. indented indented um so um there's a so that that's not wrong um but there is a uh this is one of the cases where there's um Kind of even more obscure uh, vocabulary um, when uh, an an ordinary is indented on both the top and the bottom. Um, we can imagine that the the indents might line up, pointing at each other, and you'd end up with something that looked like kind of a series of diamonds, uh, uh, or they might be like this kind of interlaced between each other and you'd get a kind of a zigzag stripe and both of those turn out to have their own uh their own blazons because uh the the visual difference of the two is is significant so in this case where where you have this zigzag stripe anyone happen to know that uh the the custom obscure name for that Who's weighing in? Let's see. Basil's got it. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, yep. So we, so yeah. we call no. that instead of indented or more. And Shannon got it. Yep. Then indented. We can call it density. Um, with it's dancing. Head. It's dancing. Yeah. 
it's wiggling back. It's, a, it's wiggling. It's up and down. Uh, I uh, tend to think of it as a sound wave, and with sound comes, hey, we can dance to this. Uh, and um, to get even because that no, term no, of Bru Bruno Bruno's asking about specifying number of peaks uh generally not that's a, a great question though and and the same thing is true like do we have to specify how many stripes there are and for for both of those um uh I believe both Paley and Bari can only have a certain amount of yeah, stripes. They, they have to be equal amounts mm -hmm. as they well. Have to be yes. Equal amounts. And if if you said, oh, I want uh, a field that's Bari and someone drew only four sections, um, people would be surprised. Uh that that's that doesn't seem like enough really. Uh, I think you usually, I think you usually want to start with um, six. six, or, six so you had six, or, or, yeah, six or eight. Totally is, is usually the... If you said, "Oh, it's Bari," and then someone drew thirty-two stripes, they'd say, "No, okay, they don't." You know, yeah, that's a little much. That's crazy. But uh, six, uh, six or eight is 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 the normal. Yep, yeah, and for. Um, for kind of uh, things like this with with bumps or uh, you know engrailed or indented or embattled any of these varieties, um, uh, you know half a dozen, four, five, uh, all sort of um, unobjectionable. Sometimes uh, a submitter or in period a a you know a king or a whoever would. Um, would really care about that. And they would, we'd mm -hmm. sort of say it's, you know, deep personal significance. For some reason, it has to be exactly three bumps on the top. And so sometimes you will see things uh, blazoned, you know, per profess embattled with three, exactly three embattlements, or exactly mm -hmm. five, or, you know, Bari... Yeah of six stripes bari of 12 stripes because it's for some reason you know they they it, it really matters to them mm -hmm. um the the uh sovereigns of arms um are not enthusiastic about that uh about that practice and yeah. will will tend to leave those terms out of their blazons unless you really make it clear to them that it's uh of deep personal significance and you're gonna you're gonna be sad if if they don't say it's exactly three bumps on the top mm -hmm. we usually we, we sort of say that's that's artistic variation and if if someone mm -hmm. draws your arms on a scroll or on it makes you a banner or something and there's four bumps on the top like it's fine it's still a fest density no one's going to get confused with someone else no one else is going to register the same thing but with a different number of bumps uh mm -hmm. so we we tend to we tend to leave those counts out uh uh unless there's some overwhelming reason that it has to be included mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Basil just uh, just brought up a um, an example with uh, one of the baronies. Yeah, yep. barony of three mountains. Their uh, their blazon is argent, a laurel wreath vert, and a chief density of three azure. The barony is three mountains, so they're showing the three. So they they had a good reason for specifying three. But um, generally, there isn't a, there isn't that much of a reason. Yep. So yeah, yeah, when your name is three mountains and you want your your device to reflect that. Yep. Thank you, Basil. So uh, let's get back other, to other questions about uh, in Gracia de Madrigal. Anybody else want to? Uh, nope. the, the, um, 
a couple of people I think pointed out in the uh, in the chat that there's a there's a term uh, specifically for the the case of a fest density because this uh, this particular design element shows up in a bunch of medieval armory and mm -hmm. somehow in the course of hundreds of years of blazoning they they came up with a specific term for this. Um, so we could uh, we could also write this as Paley, Azure, and Argent, a dance vert. Uh, and that's just a sh shorthand for a fast density. Yep. All right. Let's move on to some. Uh, and this some is other... for the siege marshals of the SCA. Yep. And this you'll notice. The badge, so. The, this is, it's not on a shield. What's going on? Well, it turns out the fact that uh, we always show things on shields or even the f for badges on squares or circles is um, is m more a convention than uh, a particular requirement. Um, and uh, uh, while that's what people would expect when you were submitting your uh, armory or kind of showing it uh, for comparison with with other armory. If you were painting your armory on a on a real world object or making a banner of it or a, on your clothing or where whatever you were going to put it on, you would expect the field to stretch to fill whatever the space available was. So the fact that it's on a square, it, you know, this is a badge, but perfectly fine to show your arms on a square or a circle or a heart or a heart <laughs> or or to fill up whatever whatever space you have available. So yep. let's let's blaze in this. Uh, this newly registered badge for Siege Mark. Seb, Seb got it. Basil got it. Yep, we've got a, our field is black or sable. Mm -hmm. And our charge is a trebuchet. Uh, and the trebuchet is or. Um, and that is the standard depiction of a trebuchet, from what I understand. And we don't have to say anything about its um, orientation because uh, uh, it turns out this is the default uh, orientation for for a trebuchet. Um, for uh, a lot of things that have a, a facing left or right. Um, Facing to the viewer's left is the the natural default. So you see mm -hmm. animals facing that way, but also kind of any kind of an object that has a a directionality to it almost always is, you know, shooting to the left, or it's a hammer. It's hammering to the left. It's mm -hmm. that's kind yeah, of you can you can specify it's the other way, yeah, if you want to. But but that'll if we if we flip that guy around, we we would have to say it was a trebuchet contorny, kind of flipped left to right. Uh, mm -hmm. But with the with the pokey thing on the other side, basically. So Any questions? Turned around. Siege marshals. And arrow and Drosmus says arrows are one of the exceptions. Yes, arrows uh, pretty much are always pointed down. So if you have them pointed up or pointed left, right, you have to say what uh, what position that they're in. Yep, the the default orientation for arrows n did not seem particularly uh, intuitive to me. Uh, swords by default are point up, and arrows by default are point down. And I figure that's because they're they're raining down on you. I mm -hmm. don't know. Why. Pretty much. Pretty Why much. Ar ar arrows come down on you, swords generally <laughs> pointing up, trying to. Okay. All right, another and, example. And here's the badge for the College of Arms. Anyone? It's a little more complex. And Basil's start got it. Start with the field. Colors are field. 
Vert two trumpets or uh, in saltier or I, well, specify two straight trumpets. I can never remember. I think uh, I think straight trumpets are the default. Um, and uh, the the fact that they are in saltier could either go here at the at the end of the description before the tincture or it could go um, at the beginning uh, and uh, you'd have to look at the actual registration uh, uh, to see how was it blazoned at the time it was registered either of those uh, locations is sort of yeah uh, so so now we're talking about two objects crossed and that is always insult here which which yeah. basically is so that you've got those four bits you got one two three four and the the cross is like right in the middle um so how would we how would we know if uh we needed to describe them as uh straight trumpets uh so i do we have other trumpets that can be used as so we would have to know is is there yeah so the the only way i know of of doing this is to go look it up in the traceable heraldic art and or mm -hmm. the uh pictorial dictionary uh, and for this, uh, I would um, I would take uh, Bruce's uh, just commentary in uh, the pictorial dictionary here at misthome.com as much more authoritative than whatever I have in the, the traceable art. Um, so uh, he says the default form is more fully blazoned a straight trumpet, but then he shows in our in his first example. He shows it as blazoned just as a trumpet. Um, so I, I take that to mean that uh, we can include the word straight or leave it out. Uh, uh, and that that is, um, th those are two uh, mm -hmm. equally, equally uh, acceptable. And down at the end of the, uh, of the article, he says, all of these trumpets have their bells to chief. So confirming that the the, yeah, the bell is up. Yeah, the open end uh, points points upward by uh, by default. Um, mm -hmm. So we do not have to explicitly label that yeah. uh, that these are shouty end to chief rather mm -hmm. than to base. Yep. Yep, and we had a question from Bruno about uh, the language and uh, blazons that said crossed insult here. Uh, I have seen that on some of the older blazons before the, the latest rules for SCNA, the Senate rules, took effect. I think today we just say insult here. Yeah, and and that's definitely an example of the the idea I mentioned earlier that the the official blazon is set kind of according to the the whims and sensibility of the the sovereigns of arms at the time that it is registered, uh, and and then it can be redone. It at can some be point. redone if if we find a, a significantly better way of putting it, but it also may just stick around and say, oh yeah, you know, it says straight trumpets. Nowadays, we would just say trumpets. That's how yeah. it was registered. Yeah. I want something crossed in saltier. Oh, we're going to write that as in saltier. Yeah. And, and to some extent you, you're stuck with whatever seems sensible to the sovereigns of arms at the time that your piece of armory is, is registered. That's just, uh, that's, that's going to be the official blazon. But, um, these other blazons, with or without the word straight, 
with insultier or crossed insultier with insultier near the beginning of the description or near the end right before the tincture none of those are wrong they're they're equivalent uh and if you gave any of them to uh another herald and said you know go draw this for me. your references and draw this out they would come up with something that was recognizably mm -hmm. equivalent yep and this is this is a fairly simple um blazon uh you know we, we're not adding other little things so it's let's, okay. let's look at something that's not so yep. simple yep this is the this is a fun one Ooh. the badge of the exchequers uh okay. so let's 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 go slow with this one start with the background and then add in the things on top and now remember what we said about uh what's the main bit what's the biggest piece and then what's the smaller piece so, so that would be what azure a pale checky ghouls and argent between six well you could say six roundels or i know there's a special thing for it i'm not sure about the uh, positioning of the the roundels though would okay. you have to say in pale or uh, uh shannon shannon has uh, has you. an example i or a, a a guess she called the roundels bezants which is in fact the the right term for a roundel or uh the bezant is a uh a gold coin of byzantium uh which was uh valued uh international uh monetary exchange unit uh and for the exchequers yep uh so, so uh, that this is another case of um uh where a case where you could have multiple uh blazons that were equivalent uh you could Call them roundels or, and you would not be wrong. Uh, but you will you will more often see them uh, referred to with our yeah. uh, our kind of nickname of Byzantz. And all of the uh, all of the roundels of various tinctures have uh, have special names. The argent yeah. one is a plate. The uh, the red one is a is a frosted cake, uh, a torteau. Excuse my my bad French. Uh, yeah, bezants are bezants are default uh, gold. So or you don't have to say yep. anything with that. Um, but let's let's go back. Um, we have Azure, a pale checky. So we have this thing that sort of looks like a checkerboard down the middle. And again, we're using that sort of um, diminutive. We're calling it checky, and we're saying that it's red and silver, or red and white ghouls and argent. So we're specifying that it's a it's a red and white overlying the blue background, and then we're saying, and it's in between the yep. peasants. And so when you say, and you're just going to say six bezants, you automatically say, "Oh, you've got three and three. Um, while while I think that um, is is proper, probably the um, the default orientation. It going and checking the uh, the uh, armorial. Uh, what does the armorial say? It, it says that uh, there was a, they were more specific about uh, the arrangement of the Byzants. Uh, so I did this just oh. about. Uh, and Brian, Brian found it. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're gonna label the Byzants as in pale, each of the, each of the sets of Byzants is in pales in a vertical row. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. 
However, I, given the date on that registration, mm -hmm. that to me puts a great big question mark next to how accurate the officially registered blazon is from my experience in newer registrations versus older. Mm -hmm. It's not wrong, but yeah. I'm not sure that we would blazon it like that today. Yeah. And if I'm wrong, uh, please correct me. No, I, I, I think no. you're I think you're right. I think um, uh, if you um, if you gave someone the blazon without that description of impale three and three, uh, I think they would naturally draw them in this arrangement. Um, ha or, hands up, people! If if you were if you were given um, that without the impale three and three, would you think of putting them like that, or would it take a little bit for you to figure out? Yeah, Bruno it's, says it might take a little bit. Sort yeah, of, it's sort of the default given the space left over with the pale taking up the middle mm -hmm. swath. But yeah. yeah, yeah, that was that was my my thinking too although i suppose you could make the argument if there was no in pale three and three you might see an artist putting them in two default groups of two and one on either side that's always possible um so yeah this is this is where the idea of the picture and the words have to match up come in and um this may be a case of they needed that extra when this was registered to make sure that people knew what the arrangement was going to be of the peasants. Yeah. Uh, uh, my guess is that you could probably leave in pale three and three out. Uh, uh, but th the way they have it is is not wrong, and nope. um, uh, when this is this is a case of things have changed over the years, but um, for this particular piece of armory, I believe that that last bit should probably stay where it is. Uh, and when um, when I am and Khan as a, it too working as a consulting herald and um, helping people uh, prepare a, a submission, my inclination is to, uh, is to be more specific, to include extra terms in the, in the blazon uh, f to reduce the ambiguity about what is it that the submitter is attempting to accomplish and uh, let the sovereigns remove terms if if they seem uh, mm -hmm. obvious or 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 by default. Um, so I can I can imagine you know going either way on that. Yep. Um, okay. So. Uh, so let's um. Uh, let's try one more particularly ah! crazy uh, example. This is from from Bruce Draconarius's, uh, uh grammar of the, one, the wonderful Bruce. Yes, of blazonry, uh, and then um, we'll flip it around to a few uh, examples where we work from the blazon uh, to a picture, to just a, a, a picture. stick figure picture, but. Okay. Let's this try this is I'm this trying. is really complex. So take your time. Uh, people, people, give me give me some pieces of this as as. Oh, as yep. Okay. That is the main uh, field. Bend There's stable. I I always get the directions mixed up, but that'd be a bend. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's oh, no. a bend sable, not a it bend. Would be, it's a bend. It would be it would be on a bend sable because we have to do the secondaries mm -hmm. on the ordinary. Yeah. So on the a bend second, sable. The secondaries are the two bigger pieces. Or sorry, yeah, this is a tertiary on the 
ordinary, is it not? Yep. Yep. Oh, brother. Okay, on a Ben Sable. I do not know the term for that center roundel. You could say a round. Uh, what? What's the white one? I forget. But a roundel, argent. Annulet. Annulet is the annulet. middle one. Annulet. <laughs> Because it could be an annulet or it could it. be a, a round L voided, could it not? You could blaze, a, blaze them either way. Um, on a bend sable, an annulet argent between, between two, two plates. plates. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that. Well, so it would be on a bend sable between a, uh, and I'm blanking it. Is that a cinder coil or whatever? A coil? Um, yeah. Maybe. Uh, well, it's only got three. It only has three leaves. <laughs> it looks like a weird form of cinder coil. I don't know what that yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trefoil, tre is it not? Trefoil. <laughs> trefoil. Oh, maybe. Yeah. It's got three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's okay. Trefoil. And what do and what do we call the the other shape? A, a, a lozenge. Yeah. Well, the lozenge. Yeah. That's a lozenge. As well. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then, and then we've on, got a on cheap, cheap wavy sable with a sword. Uh, I cannot remember the. That's not a default sword, so it's a, a no. sword. I think Basil has. I think Basil has the whole thing. So the the direction of the sword is is which way? What's the orientation? How wise? It's lying. It's no. lying. Fest no. Oh, oh fest wise! Oh my god. <laughs> fest wise, yeah. I meant fest wise. <laughs> That's okay. Notes, 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 notes. <laughs> yeah. And what's what color is what tincture is our sword? Argent. 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 So, so how are we now? How are we going to put this together? We go from the background to the secondaries to the tertiaries. Because the primary charge is the bend. Yeah. Yeah, the mm -hmm. primary charge is the Ben Sable. Yeah. Which should actually so, be slightly bigger. It should, a, but the chief pushes it down, so, so that's then we need the secondaries open. next by definition. So it's Argent on a Ben Sable between a trefoil yes. sable and a lozenge sable. An annulet and two on, an annulet on a and sable. Sergeant, yeah. <laughs> On a bend sable between a trefoil sable and a lozenge sable, a and an annulet or an, an yeah. annulet, uh, an annulet between two plates. Yep. Yeah. And I don't between a trefoil, and we can get rid of the sable after the trefoil. And yes, we can. Yeah. The yeah. How many times do you have to say? Sable and Argent, uh, as little as possible. As little as possible. Yeah. So you're so you're not going to say Sable Argent, Sable Argent, Sable Argent. Oh. You try to say it as little as possible, and you're trying to make sure that as you read it, you know which objects are Argent and which are Sable. Yeah. So, right. we, can so we can get, get rid, rid of the of first, first two Sables. sables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After band and after trefoil. Yeah. Yep. An annulet between two round, either two roundels argent or we say between two plates, um, either or. Mm -hmm. So if we change it to say an annulet between two plates. That's uh, the same thing as saying, yeah, the argent. So. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, is, Jonathan is asking, why does the bend take precedence? Because the bend is on the main field. A chief is a... Um, peripheral ordinary. Is a peripheral. Yeah. It, it, it's not in the middle. The bend is right in the middle. And um, the ordinaries um, have a few... Uh, get kind of special treatment. So central ordinaries are almost always are going to be considered the primary charge and peripheral ordinaries never are. So even though in this case, visually the bend is not that much bigger than the trefoil and the lozenge, 
um, the the fact that it runs across the center of the field and that it is a central ordinary um, kind of give it extra preeminence and mean that we're going to consider it to be the primary charge. And while the trefoil and the lozenge can be part of a, a charge group arranged on either side, you're never allowed to have a charge group that includes both a, an ordinary and a non-ordinary. So if if the uh, if the mm -hmm. bend is the primary charge, then it has to be the only primary charge, and the the trefoil and lozenge ha have to be kind of demoted to secondaries. Mm -hmm. I think for the the question on the annulet, it's it's because the way. The way we put the um, the colors in, it's sort of so we have in the blazon here we have argent, and then we have a bunch of terms and then a color, and the way it works is everything from the second color back to the first is assumed to be all that color, mm -hmm. which is why we don't have to say an annual argent between two plates. We, another way to say two plates is to put the get rid of the default and say an annual argent between two roundels argent which then shows us we can get rid of the argent after annulet, leave it at, uh, leave it after the two roundels argent, and then replace two roundels argent with plates. And then essentially it becomes an annulet between two plates. Mm -hmm. And that is assumed to be everything from plates back to annulet is argent, and then everything from lozenge back to bend is sable mm -hmm. and so on. It's kind of, it works backwards in the blazon, which is a little bit confusing at times. Yep. yep. I, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not convinced. Does anybody have any questions about what Brian just said? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that um, the implied tincture of the, the roundel argent, if we, if we call it a plate, I'm not convinced that the argent implied by the term plate then can migrate back to apply to the terms before it. So I, I'm. Mm. Uh, it may be the case that you can say an annulet between two plates and know that the annulet is argent. Uh, I I don't think that's. I could be wrong. I, I think well, that you need to. In, in I, that case. Could we also, instead of saying two plates, just say an annulet between two roundels argent to avoid that confusion? Would that be an alternate? One of the cases where it would be better to not have the default? To, to, to not true. use that specialized term and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and be explicit about the, mm -hmm. uh, about the, the tincture. Uh, that's, my, that's my gut sense. Um, uh but we can um okay we have a, we have a couple of questions in the chat we'll have to so them. um how do we know oh. the color of the bend the color of the bend um you read up through where it says sable for the first time and everything before that that hasn't is, got is the one color ready. All yeah. the things whose tincture hasn't been mentioned yet get colored in retroactively the, the next time you mention a color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have the field and then we have this whole thing and then a color. It's, oh, all those things are this color. And I okay. think as a grammar thing on the second to last line, we'd make it and on a chief wavy sable just as a just so it reads yeah. better yeah yeah yep. uh yeah. that's that's definitely a case where um there's uh some variation uh between style i've i've seen uh some people um use and there and other times i see people use a comma mm. uh I that's like. that's a that's a choice basically. Um, 
you can say and a chief, you can say comma a chief. Um, yeah. I've seen it done both ways and you wouldn't be wrong either way. Yeah. So, so that's, that was a challenge. Yeah, that uh, was, that's a mouthful. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> that one was definitely a mouthful. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's move let's into move in, the other, in the other direction. Uh, yep. where we're... Let's, let's try to go from the blazon to the picture, the emblazon. Oh, I've, I've, so, and I've, we're going to use, um, a sort of newer, um, tool from Google called the Jamboard. And you will be able to sort of scribble and draw as we as we go through this. Yeah, let me let me get that. Uh... So let's get that up. And if anybody has issues um, with this, please let us know. So here's uh, paste okay. it into there's the there's the there's the link for it. Okay. Uh, so if if you're uh, in a regular web browser and you can handle uh, lots of windows, you should be able to uh, pull that out. And if if not, feel free to just uh, uh, poke over my shoulder in the in the screen share. Um, okay. So let's uh, the up at the top. Uh, there's a little kind of a stack of slides with arrows. And if you click on the right arrow, it says next frame, you'll uh, jump ahead to our, our first example. Okay. And on the, if you're looking on the left-hand side, it's, if, you, if you hover over it, you have a pen, you have an eraser board, you have a select, you have something called a sticky note, you have an add image, and the laser at the bottom is basically um, as you move through, it moves. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't leave a line. And you can change the color of the pen. Um, you can make it thinner. You can make it uh, thicker. So, and we've got. Ghouls, a pale between two mullets or. Very nice, very nice drawing. Okay. So it, let's it see is, what we've got. It isn't, tr yeah, it is tricky to. <laughs> yeah, it, this isn't going to be a, a do it perfectly. This is, this is just, um, let's see what, what we come up with as far as the, the general look of something. Very nice. Okay. So our field is red. We've got a big chunky pail down the middle. Uh, and and two mullets or stars or whatever you want to call them. We call them mullets or. So we have red and gold. We've got the big gold stripe down the middle and two stars on the red parts. It it may look like a mess, but that's pretty good. That's nice pretty good, everybody. I, I was not not convinced the collaborative drawing mechanism was going to work. That went that went fantastic. Uh, let's uh, let's jump to the, the next. Let's do the next one and, and try something a little trickier. Okay, here we have Argent on a bend sable, a bezant. Let's try this one. Not gonna... Here. Get rid of that little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like this. Very nice. 
Woohoo! That's it. <laughs> we did it. Un unambiguously Argent on a Ben Sable and uh, I I look forward to submitting that uh, that image straight into Oscar, where I'm sure <laughs> it will be received with open arms. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, but, now I'm going to look forward to that one dropping in one of the Eastern letters <laughs> and just watching the heads explode yeah. all across the known yeah. world. And, and actually, we did pretty good in remembering that a bend goes a certain way. Yep. If we if we had said a bend sinister, it would have been our our the other way. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and that's that's an that's an example of the laser where it just goes and doesn't leave anything. Hmm. Uh, okay. And in all honesty, this is the level of, uh, of artistic uh, illustration that I manage on a, uh, at a consulting table at Penzik. So uh, yes. we're doing great. If, if anybody has, has ever done a consulting table at any of the big events and you've tried to draw something, um, Pretty much, this is the level that you come up with. Some people if you don't confuse the art people, you know, at least yeah. once. Is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, All right. we, so can we try ready. something else? Let's jump ahead to the next example. This, uh, is this is okay. This is this is my device, and I can actually show you what. It really will look like this is going to be a little more difficult. And yep. you can go ahead and add in images if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Well, they got the um, they got the way that the uh, the owls are. That's the three, two, and and one. That does seem to be the yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then you and then you go basically and shrink them <laughs> and move them over there. There you go. So, okay, yeah. Now, Think is about there a default for six or yeah, the yeah, three, exactly. two, and one is the default. Three, two, that's one. why okay. there's no. That's why there's nothing that says specific. This is the default for mm -hmm. six. So, and the reason that the owls are here and not on the chief is look at the blazon: Azure, six owls, and a chief argent. The chief is, is blank. It's just yeah. Uh, and that that question about what is the um, the default placement for uh, six charges uh, is a is a case where the uh, we're following the uh, example or the practice of. Uh, of British armory, mm -hmm. which does use this three, two, and one uh, location by default. Turns mm -hmm. out that uh, that in Iberia, in Spain, and Portugal, the shields that they used by default don't have these um, kind of uh, tapered to a point. Uh, uh, curves on the on the bottom. Instead, their mm -hmm. shields come straight down most of the way, and then curve around into a into a kind of an even um, uh, shape on the on the very bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and in in those uh, designs, uh, the you can do the, the yeah, you can do the the three, three and three, but uh, and but we follow uh, we follow English uh, defaults. Uh, yep. So for so for my six, we had a three, two, and one that fit on the shield shape. Yeah. And 
Um, I basically went into the heralds with this and said it has to be blue and owls. That's all I said. They came up with the rest of it. Um, nice. And it's it's a little more complex because you have to know default um, arrangement. Yeah. Arrangements, and this is also the default posture for an owl. So there's nothing that has to be said about it. Okay. So. I see we're we're almost at three o'clock. Let's work through a, a few more examples and then uh, wrap up and and let yep. people let's, uh, let's do lunch or, or whatever. Okay. Next one. Okay. This is a little. This is the populace of the Canton of White Way, which is Manhattan. Argent, an apple ghouls slipped and leaved vert within an oral sable. Uh, and the the oral is uh, kind of a cousin of the of the bourgeur. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, they got the slipped and leaved. Yeah, you got it. The good. The the oral, like the bourgeur, follows the edge of the of the field, which may be shield shaped in this case, but if you're on a circle, it's a circle of whatever, whatever shape the, the field is, the, mm -hmm. the, like the Borger, the oral will follow that. But unlike yep. Borger, it doesn't go all the way to the edge. It sits, sits yeah, inside. It, yep. The, the Borger is an edge thing and oral, as you can like see, offset. is sort of offset. Uh, that's a that is a lovely uh, illustration of an. Owl. I love the apple. <laughs> you guys are doing really great. All right, let's try. Oh, and we have to color it in, but okay. Next, okay. Argent, a fess sable between three tortu or torteau. French. Ugh. Um. So. Uh, okay. So let's draw. Oh, up. Oh, they got the fess. And that's right. The a torteau is is a yeah. is French for cake. And I don't know why uh medieval uh French people liked red frosting, but apparently uh it, it has it has to do with the fact that cherries and strawberries are uh the best easily cake. gotten. And also um, one of the uh, one of the colorings that you can use in food or or you could use then was red. Hmm. Coach Neil, so, that's just so, how so I cakes, like cakes cakes sort of you know. But yep, there we go. Perfect. Woohoo! Okay. All right, last so, example yeah. for the day. One more. Okay. This is this is going to be interesting. This is the arms of Shauna of Carrick Point, who was, I believe, she was Laurel Sovereign many years ago, mm -hmm. and is currently the uh, archivist. Ah, yes. So let's see if we can we can play with this one. Of per Chevron. If you're if you're not familiar, by the way, with the the office of the archivist, uh, it's, it's a wonderful resource. You find any coat of arms in uh, in society history, uh, including well, back to the the very early very, very first days, uh, and there's no um, picture of it that you can find. You can just write to her, uh, archivist mm -hmm. at uh sca.org i'm pretty sure uh and she'll you know the next yep. th that afternoon or the next day we'll write back and say here's here's the paperwork from the original submission with a you know person yep. if you're uh, if you're trying to figure that, out no. uh a blazon change if you're trying to look up a conflict and you're you're looking at something very old uh, that doesn't appear in Oscar or any of the other places that a picture would appear. She is a really good um, resource to know. And she's a sweetheart. 
So we have our per chevron field division vert and argent. That looks great. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yep. we have the we have the chevron, which is that sort of up and down mountain. All right, who's cheating with the pasting of the? At, they're allowed. Yeah, it's it perfect, perfectly. They're allowed. Yep. It's just uh, harder to do it to make it actually sable than it should be, but you know, I'm yeah. pretty yeah, sure well, that's the that's... right posture. Yep. So Volan, a raven. Now, now, he, now, here we have a um, a word that I believe is only used for birds. Volant. Yep. He's which is one of the which is one of those lovely comes down from Norman French comes yeah. down from Latin words. Yep. He's in captured in in mid flight, uh, and flying to the viewer's left uh, by default. Um, and then his wings, it's, and are... it specifically says wings elevated, so the wings are going to be up here. Yeah, the and wings are the wings are going to be up above above the body. Uh, yep. Elevated and adorsed, and which is adorsed back here is back to back. So if you see adorsed used to describe two beasts. It means they're they're back to back, they're facing away from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's used to describe wings, it means that they're, uh, they're, I'm not a bird, I can't really do this posture. Goes... The, the backs of their wings are uh, folded up behind them so that they're back to back. Yep. So not bad, not bad. Shauna would be pleased. Um, <laughs> and this is this is uh, another case where um, uh, a, a a registered blazon has words that I think now we might um, view as having been superfluous and and might not be included if we registered this same device today uh because um while there's no default arrangement for two charges on their own if the field is divided into two parts uh and there are two primary charges the default arrangement is one on each side so I think you probably could leave the words in pale out of this blazon and arrive at the same picture uh, because that's give it, given the per chevron field and two charges, we're going to put the first one on the top and the second one on the bottom. Hmm. Not wrong, just. Okay. So we yeah. have, it looks like two more frames. Let's see. I'm not sure we've. Prepped no, it. okay. No, it, it okay. Makes extra that's frames it. if you click off to the right. Okay. But that's all of the examples we prepared for the day. Uh, I hope that was uh, useful and thank you for for playing along uh, with Lily and I's first, first time teaching the class. Any uh, questions now, about anything? Questions, comments, any, anything that people need to need to get? Don't no. speak up. It's okay. Um, so, uh, thank you. Thank you all for, um, for working through that with us. Um, and, um, again, I'm Mahwin. That's Lily. Uh, we're, we're kingdom heraldic officers. And so this is, uh, this is our, our job, and it is uh, not at all uh, imp annoying or imposing on us uh, to uh, come and ask us questions and chat with us, send us email. Uh, yep. If you uh, want to, if you want to arrange another chat, if you need to uh, talk to us about 
more stuff for blazoning or emblazoning, just speak up. Yep. We'll be uh, there. Um, for those of you who are in the East Kingdom, if you're not already in the Heralds of the East Kingdom group, uh, you can find us there. Our email addresses are here and will get posted into okay. the Facebook uh, event. Okay, Francisco had had a small, he says SFPP, uh, it's a shorthand for step from period practice. It basically says that uh, what you're doing is a more modern thing and we do allow that, but only one per piece of armory. Yeah, uh, prior, to, prior to the new set of rules coming out in uh, 2013, I think they were called oddnesses or weirdnesses. Uh, weirdness. Yeah, weirdness. The, weird, the weirdness. And you, you were allowed one weirdness, but don't get too weird. Uh, yeah, so now we call them steps from period practice and we just say SFPP for short. So hopefully this has been uh, educational. And like we said, if you've got more questions, we have a little bit of time now, or if you want to discuss something later on, feel free to let us know. Yeah, we're super, super approachable, uh, email, chat, uh, mm -hmm. Facebook Messenger. Uh, yep. And uh, if, if other people uh, haven't heard about it yet, there is also a Discord server for the SCA uh, Heralds. Uh, we can put up that. I think you have to well. get individual uh, invites, but just bug Lily or I, and we can uh, we can yep, set you. we can get you in. If you if you want to hang out with uh, with other Heralds, this the new Discord server has sort of uh, sucked a lot of the oxygen out of the. Uh, Facebook heraldry chat in the last month or so as as uh, people move over there for the kind of chit chat and uh, random news of, of what's going on in the SCA heraldic community. Yep. Oh, I would really like to be on that. Okay. Uh, can we get that to Con? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's it's a, it's a good fun joint. Mm -hmm. And Shannon also has asked for it. And Adam. Okay, so let's make I sure that sign. they get their links, and you can try to get. Cool. I'll send those around after the call. And Jonathan as well. So yep, we're going to need, and Seb also. <laughs> okay. All the so it sounds cool. like it sounds like we've got a couple more people who want to try out the Discord. And um, like we said, you can always get us about this. And if people want to go over more things about Blazin, I'll be around uh, pretty much uh, any day that you want to do this. I will say that tomorrow I am a little busy, but... Um, most of the time I'm around, so you can always bug me. All okay. right. So thanks for uh, thanks for spending a chunk of your weekend with us. Uh, stay uh, stay safe. Uh, yep. And uh, stay, stay safe. Stay warm. And go hug your your loved ones. And hopefully we'll get to see each other in person at some point. There we go. All right. Well, thanks again. That was awesome. Wonderful. So, Lily, when there, can I ask a question? Sure. Go ahead. So, when when there are two, just two charges, like in the example that we were just looking at, mm -hmm. um, is, are they left? Is the default position left, right, or top, bottom? It depends on what the um, what the blazon says. If it says uh, "perfess," they're going to be left, right. If it says in pale, they're going to be top bottom. So if the field is divided in two and there are two charges, then the default arrangement is one on each side of the div line of division. But if okay. there, if the there isn't an uh, an obvious if the if the field is not divided in two, uh, 
then there is no default arrangement and you have to explicitly say in pale or in fess or in bend or whatever, whatever, however you want them arranged. Um, so that's why that example with the flute and the bird explicitly said in pale in that case, because it was a two part division, I think you could leave the in pale right. out, but if it was a, if there was no field division, if it was just a solid field, or if the field was divided in some, in some other way, it was bendy or anything with more than two parts, uh, you, you would have to explicitly say. Okay, but so the 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 um, the blazon is correct, um, and specifies exactly where things should be, um, but mm -hmm. given the convention. It, it would be okay knowing that that line of division is there yeah. to place them without the extra language. We, right. Yeah. We could, we could was, keep that. This was, this was done many years ago. So sure. we can, we can certainly tweak the language um, to update it, but this is what is in the. Uh, how, how it was registered at the time. Similarly, uh, uh, we'd have to check to see uh is what's the default orientation for a flute a flute is uh let's see uh it, the flute does not have a default orientation this is a question so we did have to say ago. so we did have to say that although it seems natural to me that a flute would be fest wise by default it turns out you actually have to say that mm -hmm. yeah like Shauna's, Shauna's device was registered in 1985 so you know that was a while ago yes <laughs> yes shauna has been playing for a very long time other other random questions <laughs> nope okay all right thank folks. You. okay uh, thank um, you and if anybody from the east has questions about jamboard um it is uh, it is slowly being added to the use of the Google Suite that the that the East has. Uh, uh, well, feel free to check it out in the kingdom. Uh, and Easterners, remember we've got court in forty five minutes. Yep. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning hey. in, spending your day with us, uh, and uh, see you again soon. Yep. Hopefully, we'll All see right. each other in person at some point. Okay. Okay. Thanks again. Have okay. A good day. Take care. Okay.